All right, we have a lovely day outdoors at the range. The sun is in the proper position, so we won't be dealing with shadows. Um, the temperature is about what, Brian? 50 degrees. 50, so no heavy mirage during shooting sessions. So this ought to be able to demonstrate the very brightest and best image uh, of a trigger cam system. We'll start with a conventional optic. This is a Nikon 3x9 and I've got it on a 22 caliber AR-15. Uh, the actual caliber is 22 NXS, Nosler Extreme Speed. So if you watched part one of the video series, you saw how we test fitted the adapters at the house so that when we get out here today, it should be pretty much plug and play. So right now I'm looking for the little mark that I made inside one of these adapters here that matches this scope. So the flange will go inside of the trigger cam. There's your flange right there. And we get the special tool. They're always special tools. Okay. And the flange goes towards the bottom in alignment with the lock nut right there. And then we will come, sometimes you got to just get it started, like that. And then very minimal pressure until it bottoms out onto the uh, back ocular housing of the scope. So before we lock down the uh, locking nut, we'll open up, well we'll turn it on. So push and hold till you hear a beep. Wait two seconds. Push and hold to hear another beep, which signals Wi-Fi on. All right. I have just a general run-of-the-mill iPhone here. Go to Wi-Fi. Trigger cam is connected. Open up the application. All, right. All I'm doing is aligning the cam. So I'll do that right there. It looks pretty much good. So I will now lock down the trigger cam. The cant is simply your reticle placement within the stationary fixed day optic. Trigger cam goes right and left and you just want to get that as center as possible. All right, so after locking down the lock nut, which fixes the position of the trigger cam onto the scope, the last step before you get shooting is to take off the rear cover off the top, and that's going to expose the focus uh, knob within the trigger cam. Uh, because you need to achieve a focus of the recorder unit onto the back of the scope. Turning this knob does not affect, so don't look for the change inside of this. You must look for the change on the on-screen image. So I start all the way bottomed out, which is, count, uh, which is clockwise. That's where I start. And then I simply move the focus ring counterclockwise until I come into focus on the, on the application. So I have the gun situated on a steel target that's all white so that the black reticle shows up as clear and crisp as possible. This scope has three circle, circles for uh, ballistic drop compensation. And I stop when those three circles appear and appear uh, in focus. For the, uh, for the viewers. Yep. And again, it's just ever so much pressure downward when you screw the cap on to keep that dial from moving so that our image is as stable as possible. All right, so I believe we're ready to uh, zero the Nikon. We'll take, uh, we'll zero it at 50 yards on the paper target there. And then we'll move to 100 yards and also zero it, uh, make any final tweaks, and then shoot a five shot group. And we'll record all of that through the trigger cam. So all right. I'm going to shoot just above the printing at the bottom of the target. All right. 
Brian is going to take us through the first shots of the trigger cam system. Ready when you are, sir. Thirty-five, forty-three. Thirty-five, fifty-nine. So, Brian just saved the day. Uh, I guess we had a failure to eject. No, it did fine. I just closed the chamber. Okay. So it did eject. Uh, Brian closed the bolt using the bolt release. And in order to open it, you've got to use the charging handle. And I noticed with this particular scope, uh, and rings, so these are medium sized rings, and I've got the scope pretty low on the front. Uh, I like my scopes as low as possible. And so, anyways, the locking nut restricts movement of the charging handle back, so we can't open the uh, BCG right now. So, we'll figure that out real quick. But interesting. Thanks, Brian, for saving the day because I was about to mortar the the charging handle. That would have been bad. <laughs> All right, so the quick fix was to take off the lock ring and just simply rotate the trigger cam so that we could open the charging handle and get back in business. Uh, so now what I need to do is just realign using the application, the cant of the reticle, and we'll be good to go. So, I could explore some higher rings, if need be, and that's close enough, and then I'll lock it in. I'll try to shoulder it a little stiffer. Two shots. Quarter's in the drop. So this is 458 SOCOM. We're going to try 10 rounds at 50 yards. So I have 10 loaded into a Ross Defense System Unimag. We'll shoot it four times, and I believe the system's ready to go, so we'll initiate recording. I'll get ears on because we're not suppressed. Try the red dot. Yep. So 
far the trigger cam seems to be staying stable. All right, 10 rounds. Okay, there we go. Here we go. I jumped on that one. 